Welcome everyone to Axio Systems webcast on ITSM Tooling Uncovered. I'm Emily Sturm, the Marketing Manager for Axio Systems. Our company is a global leader in the ITSM software industry and we were founded back in 1988 and we've really been actively promoting ITOL and ITSM best practices in over 50 countries. Our speaker today is definitely no stranger to ITOL or ITSM. Many of you uh, that are on the line, in fact, may have actually heard her speak before at various industry events. Her name is Sharon Taylor, and she's the president of Aspect Group. She just has a wealth of experience having worked in the role of CIO for 14 years, CEO for 10 years, and she's just she's well known throughout the industry for her thought leadership and just true dedication to ITSM. She was the chief architect for ITOL version 3 and now serves as a chief examiner. She's a chair of ITSM F International and serves as a fellow of the Institute of Service Management and a strategic advisor for the Institute of Certified Service Managers. And without further ado, I'll pass it over to Sharon. Thank you, Emily, uh, and welcome to all of our listeners today. Um, this is an exciting opportunity for me. I've, I, it's been some time since I've done a webcast. I've been busy enjoying my summer and, and writing some new books, so it's nice to get back into it, and I think this is a, a really, really important and interesting topic that I'm sure many people are interested in, and that, that is about trying to make the right choices the first time when it comes to selecting the right ITSM tools for your organization. So we have a, a bit of an agenda uh, that we're going to follow in terms of the flow for the webinar. Um, and I hope to cover off some of the more common things that, that people will be interested in when it comes to making choices about tools. Um, so first off, we're going to talk about some of the common aches and pains that many organizations go through um, when they are selecting tools, when they are using current tools when they're trying to decide about upgrading or replacing tools. So we're going to look at a few of those common aches and pains. Um, and then we're going to talk about filtering out the noise. The tool industry for IT service management is a, a, a massive industry and there's lots of choice available in terms of the kinds of solutions that are out there, um, a tremendous number of vendors that, that uh, offer these products and services. And we're just going to look at how you filter out some of the noise um, and narrow down the choices based on the kinds of needs that you have. Then we're going to get a bit more detailed um, talk, and talk about assessing actual requirements. How do you develop um, a requirements list for going to market looking for ITSM tools and some a bit of guidance to help you through that process. And then we're going to, to expand the horizons a little bit and talk about what some of the new tools offer in terms of being not just a tool to, to execute processes with, but as a strategic partner and helping you with your ITSM um, service provision and some of the decision factors that you'll probably want to go through uh, to determine what kind of tools are right for you and what kind of tools aren't right for you. And then I'll give you some tips uh, that I've developed over the n a number of years of working with various clients on, on making tool selections that I think might be of help. So first of all, we're going to talk about some of the common aches and pains, and I've divided these into a few categories. And the first one um, that I see very commonly is something that I call too late to say goodbye. We tend to um, approach IT service management in a, a particular migration path and a maturity path. And as a result of that, we have a tendency to select um, tools that suit the purpose of the day. Um, and what we can end up with is a, um, a selection of a variety of solutions that we've integrated together. Um, and over time, we spend a fair bit of money uh, investing in these tools. So we reach a point where we know that we need to update uh, and make some changes because we're maturing in our practices. The business is changing and demanding more from us. So we have a bit of reluctance uh, in terms of writing off the old investment. Um, and sometimes we fail to realize that 
this can cost more in the long run. It, it's pretty instinctive for us to say, well, we should try to preserve the investment that we've already made and add on to that. But sometimes, without realizing it, we can actually spend more in the long term. So too late to say goodbye is really about questioning whether or not the existing investment is one that we should try to leverage or whether sh we should try to uh, reinvest new dollars in new solutions. So we're going to talk a bit about that. One of the other things that happens along our migration path is we tend to, uh, as we become more proficient in IT service management in, within our organizations, we start to customize and configure the tools based on what we think we, we need to serve our own individual unique purposes. That has a heavy cost associated to it when it comes time to try to replace or upgrade or integrate those solutions. So we need to take a careful look at whether or not we should be leveraging existing or past investments and legacy solutions or whether we should be looking to something new. So a lot of times I believe we end up with what I call innovation that's past its time. In other words, it's time to write off that investment and look at something new. The next area that I think is common to many organizations in terms of some of the challenges around uh, ITSM solutions is grandma's quilt. We develop a sense of comfort about the tools that we have in place and that we use on a daily basis, even though as we mature in our practices, the functionality that those tools once offered us isn't quite enough anymore. So we're still comforted by the ease of use and, and, and the instinctiveness and familiarity that we have, but the functionality really has holes in it. And we, we start to try to compensate, either through changing the processes, by not automating as many things as we are able to or that we should automate, and we start uh, actually not to be getting the return on investment we could be. So over time, we have what, we, what, what I call a patchwork of solutions that we stitch together to serve various purposes at different times, and we end up with an array of tools that don't work well together as we mature. So we've got grandma's quilt, and we're reluctant to say goodbye to that. And the next area is what I call analysis paralysis. This is for organizations who are um, ready to go out to market and perhaps have been looking around to see what's available. And there's just so much uh, on offer. There's so much to choose from that we, we become unclear about how do we narrow down what kinds of solutions should even be in our, our radar for looking at. Um, we try to build requirements, thinking about all of the things that are available to us, and we get stalled because there's just so much to choose from. We're not clear about which of those requirements we actually need to have. Um, and so the process just becomes bogged down in analysis paralysis, and, and we just seem to not make any progress. Um, then we've got the, the, the symptom of keeping up with the Joneses, where as IT people, we love to keep abreast of all of the new technology that's coming into play. Uh, and it's nice to have those toys and, and bells and whistles. However, um, that shouldn't necessarily be where we instinctively look at the beginning in our search for tools. But oftentimes, that's where we will navigate to. We'll just gravitate to what's the newest thing on the market, thinking that that probably has everything that we need. Uh, and we lose sight of the fact that there are other existing products out there that might serve our needs even better. So we get a little stalled in, in, in the analysis. And so those are three common areas that I see most often when I work with clients that I think they need to try to work through um, before they, they get serious about what they're going to do next with tools. So I, I'm probably, if I could read the expression on some of the listeners' faces, I'm sure that you see, you see yourself in here somewhere in one of these three areas, if not in all three. So let's move on and look at what do we do before uh, we actually start going out um, and evaluating ITSM tools. There are some things that I would advise every organization to do first. And that helps to establish a good position and a good mindset for going out looking at tools. The first thing is getting the horse before the cart. Most ITSM experts agree that one of the things we need to have in place, or a few of the things actually that we need to have in place before we start thinking about automation and technology is the processes. 
So most ITIL consultants, most ITSM consultants will say get your processes in place first, make sure that they're working effectively, uh, and then start to think about tools. So things like the practices themselves, the processes and the workflow that you're using within service management, how well those have been adopted and are embedded within the culture, the service culture that hopefully you've developed within the organization, and how the workflow fits together. Once you feel that you've got a sense of comfort that you know that these things are working fairly well, then you need to start thinking about how do you support and underpin that with tools. What parts of the processes and workflow should you be automating? And that helps to really set the stage for the, the scope within which you're looking into the market for ITSM tools. So I often suggest that what an organization would want to do first is to try and define the outcomes that you need from tools that relate to the processes that you have in place um, and how things are working within the organization related to workflow. So try to define those outcomes. And sometimes a, an easy and simple way to do this, but a powerful way, is to, is to create outcome statements. So We'll look at a couple of those. For example, we could say uh, an outcome statement that we have is, we need to trend our incident patterns by a common classification system. That's a fairly simple statement, but it, but it sets up a requirement uh, idea in our minds. So in this particular outcome statement, we're looking at automating areas within incident management, and we want to focus on a common classification system that brings along a whole host of benefits in terms of looking at incident patterns and trending what's going on in the environment. So that outcome statement can conjure up some specific requirements related to incident management, perhaps problem management, etc. So every organization should, should try to create a set of outcome statements in all of the areas that they're looking to help automate and support with technology. And that forms a basis for which you start building the requirements. A couple of other examples of outcome statements might be, we need to identify problems faster by matching recurring incidents. That in itself has a, a set of requirements that come along with it, and it helps you to focus on what it is you really need and what it is you're really trying to achieve achieve or what outcomes you're trying to create. Um, you could say, we need to automate uh, a particular process, but we also want to avoid risk and capital costs. Now that outcome statement says, okay, we're looking for some process automation, but one of the major requirements that we have is to avoid risk to the business or risk to the organization as, as a whole. And we want to avoid expending a lot of uh, funds on capital costs. So that might then drive the particular model that we're looking for in acquiring tools, perhaps by doing outsourcing, for example. So by creating outcome statements, we're really focusing our attention on the kinds of requirements that we may have. And that's a very good baseline to start from. We then need to think about talking to the business and listening to their view of what quality of service means. ITSM tools are really a business asset. They're not just an IT tool. And they have the capability to, to uh, create business transformation. They have the capability to create a whole new idea in our customers' minds of what IT service quality is all about. But before we start documenting requirements, we need to actually have a conversation with the business and get their view about what is of value to them with respect to services they use from IT. By doing that, we can then uncover um, some additional requirements. And there are, there, there's a few examples that I'll provide further on in the webcast about what, what that actually means. So definitely take the time to talk to the business and get their view about quality services.